guess you need a sign. How you doing, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? All right, all right. I'm doing pretty good, really. Can't complain. That's good. Uh, can you guys see him? Good. Do we need to get a booster chair? See him? I'm good. Okay, just make it sure. Uh, you know, we've been together. We've done through a lot. Yes, yes. We have done a lot. Okay, uh, here next to W, you've been here since 2003. Mm -hmm. You went on your little hiatus there for a little bit, mm -hmm. but who doesn't? But in your time here next to W, who is your favorite XW superstar to watch? Mm -hmm. Cameras that way. I, I know. I'm just trying to think who. Oh. I want to say Fletch. Fletch? Yeah. <laughs> Want to say Fletch because he's charismatic with the fans and everything. And he gets. What is so damn funny? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he's charismatic with the fans and he gets everybody riled up and he can put on a damn good match. Very true. Okay, so you. He's your favorite one to watch. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite one to work with? Oh, that's hard. Because there's plenty of them out there. I mean, there's I mean, this could uh, you have a long history. Just I just yes, I go do. anywhere. With I mean, this. I've got Corey Lee who I just wrestled with. He's a good one to wrestle. I've wrestled Tommy Merriman. I wrestled Rob Slater. I wrestled Fletch. I wrestled you. I. It's just hard to pick. But if I've had to pick, what one sticks out in your mind? Well, <laughs> to be honest, well, I did. I, this is the one that is six out, which is Chris Jones, because we've wrestled a lot, and it's like we gel so good together that we know what we're doing and everything. So, okay. Uh, you've been here and you've seen it all. Mm -hmm. What, in in your opinion, what is the best show in XCW history? Um. I'm not going to be conceited about it. Can I think? You can crush your leg. <laughs> yes, I can crush my leg. I'm going to say the show. I didn't wrestle on this show. I was there, but I didn't wrestle on it. But I'm going to say the show that you came back. All or nothing. Yes, all or nothing. Because, yeah. because you were gone. And it was a big comeback for you. And that was like the best thing that I'd ever seen. Especially when your music hit and all that came out and had all the fans cheering for you. That was an adrenaline rush right there. It is. It's a very big adrenaline rush. And you've been here for a while. So you know what those adrenaline rushes are like. Coming back from Kurt Acid to Genocide. Yeah. You know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you... Or a founding father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explain to me, you know, how did you get your start? You know, you're a founding father. Explain that process with you and Fletch. Well, I mean, like, people know, like, how it started. Like, we were, we were in BYU, well, first it was HGW, and then it was, it was you and Justin Parsley and me and all that. And everybody else wrestling in there. And they branched off into two companies, which was BYWE, and you had MAW. And it was getting to the point where Justin Parsley had a thing of his own and he had a big ego. And he would not give anybody a fair chance. And me and Fletch talked it out and we wanted to give everybody a fair chance. And that's why we started XCW. It's to give everybody a fair shot, a fair chance of making something of themselves. That's why we started this. Okay, okay. We've already touched on uh, the best show in XCW history. Mm -hmm. What was the worst show? I don't remember the, the show, but I remember the match that was on it, which was uh, Dylan Bostic versus Dark Slayer. Is that what his name was? Dark Slayer? Yeah. The turn 
turn the TV out. Yeah. Turn, turn the channel. Yeah, that match. That, match. that, that was, the show was good, I believe, if I remember right, but that match was horrible. It's like, I, it's like I wanted to lay down and go to sleep, because it was so bad. Watch it fairly on pants. Uh, oh, watch that. You've had a long, lustrous career in XCW. Mm -hmm. But, there's got to be a moment in your mind that sticks out. What is your biggest moment in XCW? Hmm. Says it's been a long history for me. I'm trying to think. Maybe you said the biggest moment, right? Yes. Okay, well. Well, then I'll just have to. Do I need to read the question to you? <laughs> you do not. And I'll just go back to what I said earlier with you. That was, that was the biggest moment. I mean, we, we've had other people come back. They've left. They've come back. I've left. Like you were talking about earlier with my hiatus, when I came back in 2010, I mean, it was a big thing, but not as big as yours. It's like, every time I think of it, it's like, oh my God, it's exciting. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be friends with this guy. I like how you said friends. Okay, uh, there's been plenty of times where you know, you've done this, and you've done that. But what was the turning point in your XCW career? The turning point in mine? Well, was when I went from being harassed to genocide. You went from completely one different gimmick to another, mm -hmm. and it's worked. Yes, it has. Because when I was Kurt Aslan, I was stuck in the middle of a feud between MPG and VK2. I mean, and it's like I was stuck in the middle because I was the World Heavyweight Champion. And I got beat by DTC and the, uh, all that. And, and it's like the next thing I know, I think it was a couple <coughs> shows later, the next thing I know, here I am out there and they come and beat me down and I'm gone. And then I come back. And I beat DTC in my return match of genocide, and my career just skyrocketed off from there. Okay. So the genocide, the genocide, coming back to genocide. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. Uh, you had a lot of matches in XCW. You've been here a long. You've been in wrestling a long time. You've been in business a long time. What is the worst injury? Ever sustained? Ooh. There's two of them. It was one of them I wrestled DTC in a tables match for the world title. And he suplexed me through the table, and it was sharp ends on the table and scratched my legs up bad. Real bad. Like he was right, bleeding real bad. <laughs> and then I wrestled in a two out of three falls match with you. Uh, for the heart, for the street power title, and for the international title, and you blasted me with that light bulb, and it just exploded and everything, and cut my arm up. That was not good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, You're mean. I know. Wrestling buddy. Uh, what was the uh, worst injury you ever witnessed? I don't think that's right. Not a fair question. Not a, not a fair question. Because I think the worst injury that I've ever s Okay, I take that back. There's two. I, I know I say two. One was the one that flushed through the broken light bulb at Chris in the face. Almost took his eye out. Okay. That was a real bad one. And the other one was the one that I that I issued the flush to give him a concussion steel chair. That, that was a real bad one, too. It wasn't right. Okay. Uh, 
the is there ever a time you okay okay let me redo this you went on your hiatus uh, has there ever been a time since then or previously that you ever just wanted to give up and quit X? <coughs> no, never. I I never really I've never wanted to give up on it because I was here from the beginning. I started it all. Yeah, there was the thing that happened that that I stayed away, but I I always thought about X and W and. Wanted to make make it bigger and better for us. Okay. Uh. Okay. There's been a lot of gimmicks <coughs> in XCW. Yeah. A lot of. Them. Mm -hmm. What is the? Okay. I, actually, you know what? Well, since you have been so long, what is the worst gimmick ever? <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. Hmm. I'm gonna go with. That is hard. And I've seen a lot of bad gimmicks in my career. Yes. So I've, I've, I've seen Nemesis. I've seen KKK. I've seen Captain Crook. Um, Mel Mall. Mel Mall. Yeah. See Mel Mall. I mean, Swap Man. That's a bad gimmick, too. Yeah. Shut up, camera guy. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of bad gimmicks in my time. The worst. The worst? That's uh, the question. You gotta answer it. I know. I, I think I'll go with the. Uh, I think I'll go with the uh, K, KKK. It, it's like, what was he supposed to be? What was he like a cowboy or something? Or I don't know. Kevin, Kevin Kramer or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Crazy Kevin Kramer or something like that. I don't know. Was he racist? KKK. Uh, well, never got to really scratch anything on that. Yeah. Okay, we go from worst to best. Okay. I can go with this. It'd be, have to be <coughs> uh, Reefer. Because it's funny. Okay, Reefer. Okay, well. Yeah, Reefer because it's funny. He's entertaining with the fans. He likes to make people laugh. Especially him being this Scooby-Doo and Shrek and all that. Shaggy now. Oh. Yeah, he's Shaggy now, too. Oh. Okay, well. I wonder if he's going to be Hawk next or something. Hawk. Yeah, Hawk Smash. Oh. Yeah. Who's your thing I was talking about? Hawk movie? No. No. Don't lie. No, I didn't. I think you said Hawk. Oh, you remember me saying Batman? I thought you said Hawk. Like H W A K. Not Hulk. No. Okay, uh, you've been here a long time. I'm sure you've got something. How do you prepare for a match? What I usually do. Do you eat your Wheaties? I do when I wake up, thank you. Okay. But usually when I'm there at the show and I'm in the back, I'm usually thinking about what I'm going to do in the match with the person. Because I stay... Because I stay away from them, because I think about what I'm going to do <coughs> to them while I'm wrestling them in the match. I try to think of what I can do to make the match the best match of the show and make the make it the match of the night. That's how I think of when I prepare for mine. Okay, that's how you prepare. Let's go to. Uh, you have any uh, pre-match ritual? Not really. Not, no. Well, obviously there's no sit-ups or anything like that. You have room to talk there. No, I don't do sit-ups. So. Not none really. I just, like I said, I, I just, just a boring individual. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, 
I can understand some people don't want to get out of that zone. And you being one of those people. I've seen you before, Matt. You're just focused. Okay, uh... Here's one. Who has given you the worst chop ever? The worst... The worst chop ever. I'm going to have to go with either my cousin, Brandon Hobbs, or Dylan Bostic. Dylan Bostic likes... He gets off on chops. Yes, he does. Dylan does like to get off on chops, but when you get chopped by Brandon Hobbs, it stings. Because it's not really it's not really the hand that gets you, it's the tip of the fingers that gets you, and it stings. Especially when it gets you in the nipple. That doesn't that definitely hurts. Okay. No nipples. No nipples. This <laughs> ain't This ain't a porn, okay? You've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of moves in XCW. A lot of finishing moves. You've seen a lot in wrestling in general, and period. What is the best finishing move? Uh, Sorry, my camera man, or idiots. I'm going to have to go with the... Uh, it's a suicide effect because the suicide effect because I've taken that and it hurts badly. I mean, it's not bad because you're you know you're up there in the air and everything because he's got you, but it's like he swings your hands like yee. <laughs> then when he slaps you down, your back's like <laughs> I grab my back. This guy completely just said yee and giggled. <laughs> It hurts my back when I take. It hurts your back when you take the suicide effect. Can you breathe? <coughs> yeah, I can breathe. <laughs> Continue, please. It's like when he slams you down on your back. It hurts because you you lose your air. It knocks the wind out of you. That's what it's supposed to do. Well, uh, well, well. <laughs> have you taken a suicide effect? No, because right, he can't pick me up. Okay. uh... Which pro wrestler were you most influenced by? Okay, I know you're going to take this as a shock, but it wasn't Hulk Hogan. You cried on my shoulder <coughs> once. Because Hulk Hogan came back. Leave me alone. It wasn't Hulk Hogan, because I didn't even know who Hulk Hogan was until 1994. Thank you. It was actually Sting and Ric Flair. I can see you Sting from you. Because I've been... I've always liked WCW, and I, that's all I it's all I ever watched when I was a young kid. And they're the they were the most charismatic guys there that inspired me to be a wrestler. Okay. Okay. In your career, you've seen a lot of matches, a lot of matches come and go. Things XCW's done things. HCW's done. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite concept match? My favorite concept match? Oh. Oh. I'm going to say ladder matches. I mean, I've been, especially since I've been in a few of them, <laughs> I'm scared of heights, which sucks. But, I mean, I'll have to do Whatever it takes to, if I have to climb up the ladder to get that belt or get whatever it is that I have to to win, I will do it. And I've seen some damn good ladder matches in XCW. One that sticks out in my mind with you is you and Rob Slater. Very well, Joe. Yeah. Uh, you like you like ladder matches, mm -hmm. so. But you've also been. Countless hardcore matches, extreme rules. What is the hardest weapon shot you've ever taken? I'm going to have to go with that light bulb from you. Because 
There was no blast after that. No, there wasn't. Because it's like as soon as you as soon as you hit me with that, it's like oh my back, it hurts. Are you in the air? No, not in the air. It just it killed me after you hit me with that. Me kill you? You're still here. Okay. Uh, you've done a lot in your career. You've seen a lot of people. You've met a lot of people. You've done a lot. Where do you see yourself in six months? The next year? Well, I think... I'm not trying to sound conceited, but it's the same answer that everybody else wants to see is to be the very... See? You mean say? Whatever. Is they I'm sorry, i got to correct you. This has got to be perfect. Okay. Say. Is that better? Yeah. Is to be the very best that they want to be and to be the heavyweight champion of the world. That's everybody that strives to be in this business to be the world's heavyweight champion. If you're not in here to be the world's heavyweight champion, then you need to get out. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, uh, there's a lot of young talent out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of young talent. But, in your opinion, who's the fastest rising star next year? Let's see. Accordingly, he is because he went from being the uh, cruiserweight champion all the way to international champion to all the way to the world champion. And I don't really know anybody else who could do that. Like I was talking with him, uh, not many people could do that. I, honestly, I wouldn't be able to. I'm not cruiserweight, but I mean... Didn't you win the cruiserweight title? No, I was the biggest cruiserweight <coughs> in XCW. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of nicknames out there, Genocide. Mm -hmm. You haven't won, Mr. 187 Genocide. Who has the best prefix, prefix nickname? I'm going to have to go with Nightmare. The Dark Angel? Yes. He... Has really evolved. Yes, he has. In XCW, he went from, you know, being with Devil and having shaving cream on his head to beating Corey Lee, winning the world title, yep. being unmasked now. He scares me. Yeah, he needs a new different plan. But. Yeah, Nightmare, I could see him in a pretty good name. He's a dominating superstar here. Yeah. Very true. I mean, who goes out and kidnaps Fletch's girlfriend? Now the GM. Right. Hello? Not a very smart move. No, that's not. But it's turned out good for him, I guess. Okay. You were just recently inducted into the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, who should be in the Hall of Fame who is not already in the Hall of Fame? Well, like I just said, Nightmare. Because he has been here, he's been here since the 2003 season, and he is one of the most dominating guys here that we have, and he has worked his ass off to show what he can do, and I believe he should be in the Hall of Fame next. Right on, right on. There's a lot out there that needs to be on the ballot. I hope they are this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you've had Mentally Ill from Amityville. You have your current song now. What interesting got you the most pumped up? Uh, well, I've had what, what, Amityville, um, De uh, Devil Wish Prada, Stay Fly. I've had Amityville, which I've had the longest. You said Amityville? Or no, I mean not Amityville, but I meant uh, the new shit, which I've had the longest. 
Okay. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, sorry. I've had suffocate. And I've had bad influence. Uh, I'm going to have to go with... I'm going to have to go with new shit. Because it gets me ready to go out there and whoop somebody's ass. That's great. Whoop somebody's ass. Okay, uh... You see... You've done it. Face or heel? Uh, I don't like this question. Because I like being... I like being... I like being a face. Because I, I love making everybody happy and love getting... and all that. But I love being a heel because I can do dirty under hand tactics. But I'm just glad to go with the face. Okay. You know, I've heard a lot of heels. People would rather be healed because you can cheat to win. Yeah. You know, take the underhanded way. I like going out there and having a fair match. So, I like beat, knowing I beat my opponent fair and square. Right. So, now, you've wrestled in a time. What's a hammer? <coughs> what was yeah. a hammer? So. Have you ever, when you came to XCW and there's a big guy that doesn't blink, were you ever camera shy? No, not really, because, um, see, because, like I said earlier, the XCW started in 2003 and all that. And for that, I was in BYW, BYWE. And they were doing their shows on camera. So it's like I was already used to being on the camera for being okay. there. Okay, were you camera shy in BYWE? At the beginning I was because I didn't know how to how to go with prepare for it, to go with it. Because I didn't know if I was gonna mess up something. And I didn't want to make myself look stupid. But in the long run it worked out because here we are in XCW, and the next year we started using a camera, and from there on out, it's been awesome. Okay. Uh, obviously, XCW is around 2003. You started wrestling, what, 1999, 98? Something like that, yeah. Uh, do you have any experience before XCW? Well, I started in 98, 99 with Justin Parsley on his porch and, and for SBW, show of back there wrestling. And then that's when I met, met you and met a couple other people. And we were in SBW, then we went to Lover Commons and HCW. And so. then BYWE and NAW and. <coughs> That's uh, yeah. So, uh. Uh. Who were you trained by? I wasn't trained by anybody. I was all. all the thing of. adapting. Going with it and everything. And as time progressed, going from a porch to. Also watching wrestling, learning how to make it look better and everything. Looking how to see how it's done. And like, oh, so that's how it's done, that's how we'll do it. And it makes it look better for everything. Okay. Uh, you been in a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. You've had your team rain, VK, uh, VK3, mm -hmm. the dancing trio. Sure, you've had other ones in BYWE. What is uh, the best team? We'll go with BK30 because it's because it's us four, and we've been th we've been through it all, and we know that if anything bad happens, because of, we got each other's back. 
but the respect that we have for each other. Okay. Uh, now, I'm gonna. You know, this is supposed to be a bad accident. Mm -hmm. But me and you've known a lot of people. We've seen a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What do you personally not like? And on, it don't have to be an accident. personally don't like the ball. Hmm. He was trained by a CW at one point. Yeah, but it, that, that's why I don't like I don't like him. Well, I don't like him and I don't like Justin, personally. Because he took our guys and tried to make them look like jokes and all that. UNW. Yeah. That was not a really good time that I that I hated him. And he took a guy like Mel Maul, we trained him, and even though he he made him look suckier than he, you know, doesn't, you know, uh, you know I think you know what I'm trying to say with that. He made him look worse than he already was? Yeah. I, don't worry, I got this, guys. The cue cards are off. Uh, uh, now, XCW, you've been here, you've seen it all. 2003, you were here. What was the best storyline in XCW history, or in, for you, that you liked to watch? Ooh, this is good, you know. I liked Chris Jones the Center Ball. They just, had, they just put on wonderful matches. Yes, they did. That, that was... And that was even before... Storylines really, really were rolling. Right. They had this. They created storyline. Yes, they did. I mean, I could have, I could have said, I could have said me and with my cousin, and all that because of what we just did. But uh, yeah, 2001 is him. But you know, they were the pinnacle of making storyline great, and they put on the best matches here in XCW. Okay, you may have already answered this. With that, who was the best feud? First round Senegal. Because they had the Kendo Stick match, they had the Trump match, they had um, uh, what was that match? That, it was the match that they had at night, and uh, I think the Senegal went through the flaming table and he cut his finger. What was that on? That was a ladder match. Ladder match, yeah. Because that's how he got his finger. He was going for the belt. Wow, okay. But that's... Okay, I can understand that because those two were just... One, you say Chris Jones and Cynical together. It's just their names together. It sounds amazing. Yes. Let alone those two wrestling together. Yes. Okay, uh... Like 2003. Best location for you, <laughs> 2003 to present. I've liked, I've liked uh, the one we did on Locust Street, because that one was a lot of fun. Uh, it was, it was fun. Do a dancing trio. Well, not just that, but it's like. But I mean, that that was in that location. Right, but it's like all these new guys coming in and making it look. You know, we were like world dominating at that time with on West Locust Street with all the new matches we had and all everything, especially with all the new people coming in, like Devil and all that. And I like the one we're at now because it, it runs smooth and it's perfect for us. Okay, 98, 99. Genocide started wrestling. What kind of legacy do you think you'll leave behind? What do you say I'll leave behind? I mean, that you've already created a big legacy. Well, I say I want to leave behind is that I was the most influ one of the 
most influential wrestlers in this business. Someone that people can look up to and see what I've done to make themselves better in their careers. That's what I want to leave. That's awesome. Okay. Now, what kind of legacy will XCW leave behind? Legacy of the XCW behind is that XCW is the best damn company there is. I mean, you gotta look at it. XCW is a backyard wrestling company, okay? Been running since 2003. Can you look up any other backyard wrestling company that's been around as long as we have? I, do, I, I think not. We are the most dominating one. There's been some that's tried, but... Yes. I mean, I mean, I'm not just trying to count just here in Shelbyville, Indiana. I'm trying to think of all around the world, and you can't find one that's as dominating as us. We've la we started... And trust me, he knows XCW and the Internet. I mean, trust me. Well, tr believe me, I trust well, you. You done? Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure. Okay, uh, you got a life outside of XCW. Mm -hmm. But how has XCW impacted your life? My, uh, XCW has impacted Somebody my life. about me popping my knuckle. I heard it, I was like, okay. I'll be done doing Anyways, um, it's impacted my life. A lot because I've made a lot of friends in XCW throughout the years. Granted, I've made a lot of in uh, I don't like a lot of people throughout the years because of XCW. That's the business. But I've made a lot of good best friends because of this company. And that's what I love about being in this company is being with all my friends. Okay, uh. XCW been around for a while. Uh, what's the best thing to come out of? Really? <laughs> Did you just belch on me? <laughs> Did you get any off of you? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Sure. Excuse me, audience. I'm sorry. Stinks. <laughs> What is the best thing to come out of XCW for you on a personal level? That I've made myself a better person. And I've opened up a lot more. Because when I... Because at the beginning, I wasn't really open up with a lot of people and everything. Because, you know, it was 2003, 2004, I well, wasn't really open up a lot, but... As years progressed, I started getting opening, opening up a lot more and more with a lot of people. So it's made me a better person for that. Make me want to cry. I'm sorry. Uh, been here since day one, genocide. Mm -hmm. What is your proudest achievement in XCW? I could say winning the world's heavyweight title. Because that is a pr proud moment to win. But I'm going to have to go with starting up XCW and making it what it is today. That's my pr that, You and Fletch are the only ones that can say it. that's your achievement. Because you guys started yeah. an empire yeah. here. Worked our ass off to make it what it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, your name and gimmick. How did you really say, hmm, genocide? I like that. Well, to be honest, the way genocide came about was um, I was wrestling with Justin Parsley. And he was a youth. And he was going by the name of Homicide at the time. And he was the. They was trying to think of a way of making, you know, we got homicide, 
We've got suicide, which was another guy. And we got we need a genocide. And I took the genocide and from here on out, here I am today. And well, there's no more suicides. There's no more homicides. There's only one genocide. And I beat them you all. You just thought you just thought of that all by yourself, didn't you? Yes, I did. You're so happy, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been around a long time. I'm sure you've heard this question or heard this a lot. What What do you think about when people uh, say wrestling? It pisses me off because it's like if if you can't say that until you actually get in there and do it your own damn self. Exactly. Until, until you get in there, don't run your mouth. It'd be point given. It's like, shut your mouth. Until you get in that ring and do what we do, you can't say it. It takes yeah. a toll on your body. Yeah. I, I don't think something that's fake takes a toll on your body. No, it doesn't. Okay. Everything. I mean, I'm not trying to say just us, but look at all the other sports. I mean, obviously they're real because it takes all of them, and they call us fake. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, sir, it's a pleasure having you, interviewing you. I've known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Sorry to call you my friend. Uh, it's all for uh, this edition of uh, XCW's free time interviews and uh, I'll see you next time when I review my buddy my good friend Fletch uh, uh.